record button. And uh, Caroline, this is our Empathy Circle Facilitators Support Group, and Carolina is going to be reporting, and she works internationally and is from Poland. Take yeah. it away. Thank you. Uh, so I just want to um, do some update about what we are doing. Actually, we're doing that together with Marta. So I'm not sure if we will not overlapping. I'm not sure if Marta would like to say something. Uh, so we actually ending first cohort of our training we were doing on Monday. First of our participants will have her first uh, uh, empathy circle fully organized by, by her. It will be Leona uh, from Australian team. So we are happy to be with her there and support her. We a little bit maybe I will create uh, say a little bit of background. So it's for three up to four session uh, training. We start with empathy circle, simply experiencing uh, the method. The second session is uh, about facilitation. Uh, we give some information and we uh, everything is in the format of empathy circle, but we give some information and and we also um, share some tips, some advice, how we do some tricks. Uh, um, that's how it looked like. And then we pro, uh, offer co-facilitation. So we change a modified a little bit our uh, training program. So we decided to give a chance to participants to 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 get involved step by step with small steps so we uh, because our open uh, region calls organized by global support uh, develop unfold the we experience some boom again we have a dozen people on our call so it's great and we need more facilitators so it's kind of work together uh, very well, we offer co-facilitation to, to the participants of the program. They might have opportunity to learn slowly, have few experiences. Well, some of our uh, uh, co-facilitators are more experienced, some less experienced, but that's how it works. So first is Empathy Circle, then a session about facilitation, then co-facilitating with us some empathy circles and then they try to to do their own empathy circles or cafe with our support and we also help them to debrief um, kind of um, initiating a support group because it's also important to create a support group for facilitators so they can they can discuss, share their feelings, how they, uh, uh, how it was, uh, can discuss how to prepare to the next empathy circle and that sort of things. That's how we do that. Um, so we step by step uh, show um, participants how to do that and we share with them materials from us, so we gave them templates of our empathy circles, uh, links to to your website, Edwin, and uh, um, to some recordings. And another thing is uh, uh, collecting the names and contacts information so we slowly create a, a network of facilitators. They can support us in open region call, in our empathy circles here, for example, in uh, XR 10 principles series or other series we will create. We will need more facilitators and uh, can uh, they can support us and we slowly create uh, uh, we we did uh, a spreadsheet when 
where we put all the names, contacts, and uh, a little bit description uh, where where uh, where they are from. And that's that sort of uh, things. So that's how it looks now. So the first cohort, so to speak, uh, is uh, taking off. Um, they start their own circles. This is great. And one more thing I would like to share. Uh, we start talking to global support trainings. Global support is international body in Extinction Rebellion. Maybe not everyone knows. It's kind of, uh, uh, it's not the headquarter. It's just the, the group that, uh, that uh, provides support to any local groups. Um, there is no hierarchy in Extinction Rebellion. Uh, and there is a sub-circle in global support uh, called uh, trainings, and they offer trainings to different, uh, to whoever wants those training, uh, and we offer it, uh, we start talking with coordinators about doing trainings uh, regularly, on a regular basis. So every week there is a session or we will discuss our capacities and how we can organize that. So that's the update. Marta, will, maybe you want to add something or m clarify anything? No, that's it. That's where we are. Uh, we're thinking of doing it with a group in Ireland next week. Yeah, as well. next cohort. Yeah. Next. Mm -hmm. uh, and also we, we are waiting as well because I think at some point we'll we'll get feedback from from others in the team, um, so that you know it's not to see if if these materials because uh, they surely can be improved uh, and all mm -hmm. of that, uh, and so there's you know experienced facilitators that can uh, work help us make it better and work through it and see if the current format is the best or or what. And also, it was really interesting in one of the last ones that we had Martin from uh, XR Norway, who's been, you know, he's done like since he started some months ago, he's done a dozen empathy circles in Norway. And so he, we, we asked him to come on it. Of course, he doesn't need it, right? He's been facilitating all of these, uh, but he came on it and it was great to have him as a participant because we could learn from him and so even I think for people that have been facilitating it's a good so far it's been a good model because we can learn from each other um yeah so also we we need to send him the materials and get feedback as well mm -hmm. so that's where we are if there are any questions suggestions I'm open to it um yeah Bill well, I just want to say that I listened to your two hour training video and, um, you know, I thought it was really good. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't have, um, it, I can't go into detail. I took uh, copious notes. So I hope you appreciate that. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, but it's really very interesting, really in depth. Um, uh, I'd start, you know, to see it helps me to envision how this might be done. Um, I think what we have to do, you know, my only feedback is that we have to, there's the people who want to do um, empathy circles, which is a greater set, and there's a subset of people who want to go on to facilitation. And I think that we just have to kind of like figure out how we can meet both those people's needs and give people, for instance, who need maybe. I don't know, three, four, five times to, you know, get used to it or do it before they feel secure, then go on to the facilitation train. But, you know, really good and really, um, you know, really good. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, Edwin? Yeah, in terms of those uh, two uh, trainings, uh, they're on, a, I think, on a Zoom uh, platform. Can they be put on YouTube? Can I put those on YouTube or do you want to keep those sort of private? 
Uh, I already put them on YouTube. Oh, okay. I uh, on uh, Kronk Empathy, on I use Polish channel to put them on the YouTube. And <laughs> because I didn't have any other channel access, mm -hmm. and so I use the Polish channel uh, for empathy circles. Um, but um, we didn't uh, kind of, uh, I didn't link them because uh, somehow we decided that it's kind of training. Mm -hmm. I don't know actually why, why don't. Uh, why not? Uh, just, you know, we tr we kind of thinking about it as a training material. We are not sure if we want to make it popular, you know, and, uh, to, to available to everyone. It's public, but we, I just didn't share. Marta, yeah, Marta. So I think for me, there were two reasons why, I mean, I, I didn't do it, you know, but there's two reasons why I thought when Carolina, it's, it's public, well, why it's not public at the moment. One, we hadn't had the feedback, you know, from you guys. So I think that's important to get, to have yeah. everyone agree that it's okay, that it's good enough, that it can be out there. And then the other reason as well is I know within Extinction Rebellion and maybe in other environments, there's this tendency that you watch the videos and then you think you've done the training and then you think you don't need to do the training because you've watched the videos. And, yeah. um, and, and I understand that logic. Mm -hmm. I understand that logic. And, and like, to be honest, most people that have done the training so far, like they'd be therapists and facilitators and they're way more experienced than I am. So it's not about, you know, <laughs> and they've got the credentials that I don't but there's something about experiencing the method and going through it that you can't get from watching the video so i'd on one hand i'd like to publicize them on the other hand i'm aware that if we do some people might watch them and think well why do i need to do the training now i've already watched the videos yeah yeah that was our concern yeah uh, I see the uh, the post on channel. I will put some information, uh, uh, the link to those uh, recording. Uh, Dr. Carlson, I will find in a minute. Well, after my my turn, I will find uh, the the link. Yeah, Lou. Yeah, I think so. I also watched the the um, video, which is, you know, long, it's two hours long, which is a lot of time to invest to watch something. And I think while the content is very good, it, it covers, you know, a lot of important topics. And it's very um, good to see both the experienced facilitators and the new people are learning, being reflective about their, about the process and learning about it. Uh, um, so I think it's a, an interesting problem, an interesting training problem of, you know, how do you get information across, but do it in a way that's efficient, you know, that um, minimizes people's time, because that's a barrier. And then the other thing that you're saying about that there's a difference between experience, experiencing something and knowing and knowing about it, like learning about it. And so the videos can help you understand it or to some degree or know about it, but it's not the same as experiencing it. So um, I agree that like going, th sitting in an empathy circle, like the one that you recorded is an important part of the process for mm -hmm. facilitators. And so watching the video should not be replaced or that, that experience should not be replaced by watching the video. So, I, and I'm, I'm not sure, I'm thinking off the top of my head and sharing what I'm thinking. And um, I don't know what the answer is. Um, so yeah, so I'm just, yeah. But I, I really, I'm very excited by the work that you all are doing, that both of you are doing, and I'm inspired by it. And I'm, and I'm also really excited to hear, you know, about how you're involving others and training them up. And that's really exciting to hear. So thank you for doing that work. I just want to say that I think that it, there are different, so to speak, different types of people. Some people are enough self-reflective, kind of have this ability, this uh, this 
um, habit of being reflective, thinking if I'm good enough, doubting in their own skills, and and I'm I'm not afraid to show this film, uh, the, this video to such people because I know that they are uh, careful with. Uh, um making easy decision uh, that they are ready or not ready uh, that they are ready to to facilitate but there are also some people who are completely uh, um, i don't know how to say that but feel very comfortable with thinking that they are great and have no doubts about their abilities so it's kind of you know you don't know who is watching this recording it's kind of difficult to 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 let it just spread. So, in my experience with teaching and training over a long period of time, uh, that's uh, what you're saying is absolutely true. Different people like to learn in different ways. Some people like to read. Some people want to watch a video. Uh, some people need a slow pace. Some people want to be able to go much faster be because mm -hmm. of their background. Uh, so that's absolutely true, and I think that's a strength of providing a lots of different things so that yeah. people can find what works for them and they can and people need different levels of preparation for taking the next step mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah dr carlson uh <clears throat> yeah i just uh heard you know struggling with uh you know having a uh, you know widely available uh uh training process that can uh, ramp up your you know capacity to have uh you know facilitators for uh the circles uh for xr uh but also uh, you know as, as you start to grow to a certain size and uh you know dealing with the complicated kind of nature of the subject matter and the and the empathy circle skills. At some point, a, a large organization starts to wonder about, you know, uh, should we certify our our uh, facilitators? You know, so you might have your videos out there for people who just want to kind of just get a deeper taste of it. Uh, and then you could also maybe uh, have a uh, exercise where, uh, you know, at the end of it, you would, uh, you know, provide some kind of certificate to them. That they are official, they're, that they're an official facilitator of XR, perhaps. I have, yeah, Marta. I don't know if you want to respond to that first. I was going to talk about something. No, no, no. Go yeah, on. That, that's that's a that's an idea, um, uh, Stefan. That's something we. I mean, we've not talked about it, and to be honest, like we're too busy to really think about that. But, but I think we we've mentioned it before that there's this like none of us feels the need to certify anything. Uh, but at the same time, all we discussed it in like a, you know we brought it up in the sense of protecting the method even from from it being used for profit and the whatever circumstances you know. Um, because one thing is if people, and I think someone in Australia was doing that where they're collecting donations. So like people can, that can't afford it, do it for free, but then there's a certain scale of donations. So that like, that makes sense because it needs to be sustainable for some people to be able to do it if they're not doing it apart of the employment. But then, you know, somehow protecting it for it not to be for profit also makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so sorry, that, that's a bit of an attention. The other thing I wanted to say was that the, um, so we've done like two cohorts in Australia now. We're going to plan to do one in um, uh, in Ireland, and you know now this the, with the involvement of the global support, we'll see how that goes. Um, I was thinking it'd be great to have, get a cohort um, of people in the UK that yeah. would you know. So when the what we've been doing is we can do three to eight people in one go eight would be the maximum really mm -hmm. because like unless you know we started doing it with like if if uh, if we do it where bill can join us or lou or edwin or then then we can you know but basically the most each facilitator can do is four people i'd say per per run um 
so that we have a facilitator per circle. Uh, but yeah, but it would be good to do one in the UK as well, like just to to then have it uh, available. Because global support, the, the way I understand it, is more like there's global support and then there's XR UK in a way a bit. So if, if it can then be offered back. Well, uh, I'm not sure what you mean, but global support is independent from UK somehow. Uh, uh, it, there is XR UK and there is global support for, inter, for any groups internationally. Do you hear me? Yeah, you're lagging a little bit, but we, we do hear you. Okay. So I do want to move I on to, we mm -hmm. had our, that's about okay. 20 minutes that we've gone. Um, I do oh, want to yeah. add, I do want to add that uh, this is, it's very universal, even though Extinction Rebellion is, you know, there are a lot of people are working on this. It's totally transferable to the healthcare industry field or any other, yeah. you know, education. So this is, all the insights are, are very transferable. In terms of certification, um, I think within the healthcare field, that would really be, you know, probably be good because then you could give CEUs or something, right? And if you give CEUs, it means that all the healthcare workers need to take, and even teachers too, that they can kind of plug in. And I think Martha has something, we can, I don't want to go into it too, maybe that's a whole topic for, it, for itself. Uh, but I do want to keep us on track uh, with uh, with everyone else, with others. So I did see, so that was it. 